afternoon everyone and welcome to the One Pot Wonder. Um, today is January 12th, 2021 and we are in session three, uh, class six, which is our last class for this group. And I say a great big thank you for sticking with us and um, I hope you really enjoyed our program. Um, and I, before we get started into cooking, I'd like to just give a great big thank you to all of our sponsors and our volunteers. Um, and uh, a, a very special thank you this week to the um, Lethbridge Interfaith Food Bank. Um, they have graciously donated a large surplus of chicken to us, as well as last week they donated our bison to us, which was um, pretty yummy. So um, a big thank you to, to you guys down in Lethbridge. Um, a very special thank you to the Lethbridge Foundation for continuing support to be able to put this program on. And of course, um, our local food center here in Pincher Creek has been a wonderful support. They're giving our bags every week. They're doing our milk and eggs and then they give us a surplus of some of their supplies as they can. Um, and a big thank you to them as well. Um, and a very special thank you to Kayla Ray X Dean Stein. Stein. I did it again. <laughs> um, for sticking with me and doing this uh, video for us. So, um, and of course the Napi Friendship Center for their ongoing support to let us do this program. And also as well to the um, Pagani Child and Family Services. Um, some of their staff have graciously come out faithfully every week to help us do deliveries. So a uh, big thank to all of you guys. Um, so let's get started. And uh, today we are working on doing a pretty simple recipe. Um, we're going to do some chicken. Um, it's the thighs with the legs on it. And we're going to do a shake and bake, which is kind of an old school uh, coating. Um, I, we did kind of look at doing our your own, which you can. Um, this was just kind of an easier way for us to be able to um, give you some different ideas. Um, so we'll do the chicken shake and bake and we're just going to do some mashed potatoes. We've given you a 10 pound bag this week just to have some extra because I mean you can always use potatoes. Um, so we're going to do mashed potatoes and some corn and a salad. And then, of course, um, you have your eggs and your milk in your bags as well this week. Um, so we'll get started and um, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to do our shake and bake chicken first because it's going to take about probably about 40 to 45 minutes or so um, to cook. So um, I have the, the thigh and leg out. I like to do for the shake and bake. Um, to actually cut it so that it's cutting the actual leg off. So <clears throat> on your chicken, um, there's a joint at the top of the ball of your leg. There's a joint right here. So you wanna just go up above that. You'll feel it when you're, you're going to cut it. And so then you wanna cut, just cut it straight across. So then you've got a thigh separately and your leg separate. So I'll just, um, so if you just go to the top, you'll feel it's kind of like a knuckle and you just kind of cut. This isn't the sharpest knife, but it will uh, do the trick today. Of course, I never bring my own knives. <laughs> okay, so so as you can see, that's, that's what it'll look like. Um, so before you do your shake and bake, you want to make sure that you wash your chicken. Um, for two purposes, one to just because it's been packaged in the store. So you want to just um, wash it in cold water. You don't have to do it in soap or anything like that. Um, so just wash your chicken and then um, you can, and my hands are kind of chickeny right now, but um, you take your package and you just put it inside in your box of your shake and bake. You'll have some packages like this. Okay, so we have our chicken washed. As I had said, you just cut at the knuckle. Um, your chicken, your chicken, uh, you just cut, you just feel and you can feel the knuckle when you're, when you're where you, it's best to cut. 
So it's all washed. You do not need to use soap or bleach or anything like that. Just rinse your chicken off. Um, give it a kind of a, a scrub and it's got a little bit of liquid on it, which also helps to put your, <laughs> which also helps to put your, um, your coating on. It just stays on a little easier. So we'll get these open and start the process. So I wouldn't put both packages in one bag. It does come with two bags. So once you've um, started to coat your chicken, then uh, if it starts to get a little gooey or gets, gets where it's too much, uh, kind of it doesn't coat properly, then just switch over to your next, your next pouch. So just close off the top of your bag and you're just gonna shake it, kind of shake it off so that it, the excess, and you just put it onto your pan. I'm using a parchron paper today. I don't know if you can see that. Using a parchron paper just to kind of so that it doesn't burn and you can use a tin foil as well, but parchron paper actually works really well because it, and you know, you can use it for cookies or whatever you're baking with. It just uh, doesn't allow it to stick to your pan. So we will continue with this. And you could certainly add some additional spices to too if you like. This uh, the shake and bake that you're getting is the original. There is a crispy one, and there's different ones that you can get. You can get it also for pork, for fish. Um, anyway, I should do a commercial for shake and bake. Hey? <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna flip this around a little bit. And it does, your bag does start to get a little bit gooey as you can see, um, but don't, don't worry too, too much about it. We'll just use up what we can. <clears throat> so I just wanted to let you guys know um, please do not save any of your excess shake and bake once you've had your chicken in your bags uh, because of contact with raw meat. Uh, you could get salmonella and so it's very important that you just throw away the excess and um, that way it's safe for everybody. Okay, so we're gonna do the potatoes and I'm sure that everyone has done mashed potatoes before so we won't spend too much time on this. Um, but I did wanna let you know that uh, like this amount of potatoes is five pounds. And so depending on your serving sizes of what you need, um, for mashed potatoes, I know sometimes we all question like, ooh, how many do I make? Am I gonna have enough? Um, so for an average serving size, so for example, if you have six people that you're having over or you have in your family, um, you're gonna want about two and a half pounds, which would be half of this. Um, but if you're a big potato eater, then go for, I would double it. Um, so for today, we are, from this demo, we're feeding seven people. So we're gonna use the full five pounds, but I'm not going to um, demonstrate that. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You can, the best potatoes to use for mashed potato is your russet potato, which is what you're getting in your bag. Um, there are different potatoes like uh, these potatoes here, because they didn't have any extra russets for our demo. These are table potatoes and these are very, very good for scalp potatoes, um, <clears throat> just because they're a little bit lighter. The russet potato is, um, it's a little heavier, but it cooks better. It's kind of a, a fluffier uh, outcome in their white. Uh, whereas this will have a bit of a yellow tinge to it. So that's kind of your difference you can kind of tell. The russets have a really thick skin, whereas these have, the table potato has a really thin skin. So just an FYI. Okay, so I have the salad all, we have it all chopped up. Kayla, thank you for doing that. Um, the potatoes are actually on the element. 
I wanted to let you know um, it's it's important to, if you can, if you can soak your potatoes once they're cut up, if you can soak them in cold water and just let them sit for a bit, it helps take the starch out. People always wonder why I keep them in cold water, but um, they, if you don't, uh, they'll also go brown. So it's, um, it just helps to get the starch out. And also too, in when the water is boiled, um, I always add some salt and that also helps to take the starch as well as it just um, just gives it a nice flavor too. Um, so back to the salad. I wanted to just give you a little FYI for doing lettuce. So in the bottom of your lettuce, you will see a stalk. Um, so if you're planning on using the whole stalk, um, there's two things you could do. Uh, if you're only using half of it, you want to put it in the fridge, but this keeps the roots um, that's why it goes really really yellow um, and it just it's almost like it's still growing i know it isn't but that's the easiest way to explain it um, so to get this cork out or this stalk all, I, all you do is you just take it and go like this and it breaks this piece up and it you just have to kind of pull it a little bit and it comes out. So some are longer, some are, I'll just that one. Um, some are longer and some are really short like that one. And then if you just go into the center and you can open up your lettuce. So then of course it's just a matter of cutting it up into bite-sized pieces and putting your salad together. Okay, so we've finished our salad. It's ready to go. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Um, so that's ready for our meal. And then we're gonna try something a little different with corn. This is frozen corn. Um, the recipe that you have <clears throat> is, it says, it says not to boil your corn. The reason being is it takes a lot of your flavor out of your corn. So um, for today, <clears throat> we're gonna try it. Um, so we've rinsed the frozen corn to kind of let it unthaw a little bit. And then we're going to put it into a bit of a skillet. Um, if you have an electric skillet, that works great. Um, this is more frozen than I thought. <laughs> so we're going to um, put it in here and then we're going to add some butter. Um, I'm gonna add just a just a bit of a splash of water. Sorry, right, you're off camera. Um, I would do maybe not even a quarter of a cup. It's just enough to let it kind of steam so that it doesn't stick on the bottom. And so we're gonna add some. Should have had this open before, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna add some butter. And thanks, Kayla. I'm very unorganized today, so you gotta bear with me. And so we're gonna just put, um, you don't necessarily, if you don't have butter, don't worry. Um, it's not gonna make a huge difference. It is nice to have it, but if not, then um, you don't have to. You can just use the water. If you have a little bit of salt and pepper, you can use that as well. And so we're just gonna put it onto the stove and um, just be sure to stir it occasionally. And our potatoes are still cooking and our chicken's in the oven, so we'll show you the end product once we're finished. So we're gonna mash, or mash, we're gonna drain the potatoes, then we're gonna mash them. And like I said, these are table potatoes, so they're not, they're a yellow, as I was saying earlier. Um, the russet potato is your really white, fluffy potato. Um, which you do have in your bag. Uh, the ones that I have, fortunately, they didn't have any more russets, so I improvised. <laughs> what are you doing, girl? Okay, so, um, so after you've drained your potatoes, we're going to add some milk. Um, to be able to get your potatoes so that they're kind of almost whipped, um, so they're not really lumpy, you want to add some milk and some butter. Um, 
which really gives it, you don't wanna to put too much. It's better to put less than, and then add, than have too much, because then they have soupy potatoes. Um, so anyway, so you just, you just keep mashing your potato until there is no um, lumps. And you just kind of add a little bit of milk at a time to keep it, keep it moist because you don't want them all dried up. And so we have the, the corn and the chicken are finished. So I'm just going to get that prepared for you and I'll show you the end results. Okay, so we're complete. Um, everything is ready to go. Uh, I just wanted to show you these potatoes. I had, had started to tell you, but, um, so this is the kind of the texture you're gonna want. Um, and of course, like the more milk that you add, the sloppier it gets, but just portion it and keep mashing and you'll get all your lumps out. Um, and the parchment paper I wanted to show you as well, um, using, using um, the parchment paper. And I don't know if I told you guys, but with the temperature of your chicken, you're gonna, it's in your recipe, but um, you should have your pork chop, or your pork chops, your chicken at about 400 to 425. I would go 400, which is what we did. Um, and I, it baked for 45 minutes. Uh, it felt longer than 45 minutes, but it's 45 minutes. And with your corn, if you could just do that on just around medium heat, you don't want it to um, stick to the bottom, so you're gonna have to stir that frequently. And your potatoes, you can just put them on just under high. I wouldn't go really high because then you're gonna boil out of your pot, but um, you know, even if you did between medium and high. And I hope you enjoy this meal. It's a little, not a one pot wonder, but it, uh, was just a good combination that we thought we'd try for today. Thank you so much for joining us for the last six weeks. I hope you um, were able to get some different recipes and uh, if you have some feedback, please put it in our messenger on Facebook. You guys take care, be safe, and we'll see you soon.